Good afternoon, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Hello, Kelly. And today we are in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 53 through 65 for our midday meditation. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes. But Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy, what do you think? And they all condemned him to be, to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and to say to him, Prophesy, and the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. All right. <clears throat> so... Uh, and we've talked about this numerous times before. There were quite a few things wrong with this trial. Number one, it was illegal to try someone at night under the Jewish law. Um, the South thought they were under Roman. Yeah, they were both. The Romans let them keep their Jewish religious law as long as they abided by Roman rules for commerce and taxation and stuff like that. So... Uh, it's definitely an interesting uh, situation there. Uh, their witnesses didn't agree, and they kept having to get witnesses to come up, and then when the witnesses did say something, it wasn't what he actually said. And uh, so finally, Caiaphas reaches his break point, and he's like, just tell us, are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Are you the Son of God? Now, why would he ask him that? You know, I heard Hyler say that, you know, you know, he is the son of a Newberry father. I heard Tyler say that, you know, he was born and raised in a Florida gator. And then finally I just go, dude, just seriously, tell me, are you, Tyler, the son of Rich and Vicky? Yes. Now, why would I ask him that? Because I know what it's supposed to be. All this other stuff that these people are bringing. He said, what would those other two mean? Well, because of where his parents work, they work in the belly of the Florida Gator, the University of Florida system. And they were homeschooled, and then they spent, you know, a variety of time inside the belly of the Florida Gator, as it were. You know? <clears throat> but, you know, if I've, I've never heard Tyler come up to anybody and go, Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm from the belly of the Florida Gator. No. And and that was the thing. People were making up. They were taking stuff that he had said, and they were twisting it. And then Caiaphas, he asked the question. If I know that Rich and Vicky have a son named Tyler, and I ask him that question, it's because I know what the right answer is supposed to be. Do you get that? Caiaphas and the other Jewish leaders knew that the Messiah would be God and man in flesh. He would be a physical descendant of David, but he would also be born of a virgin. And it would be a miraculous work of God that would bring him about. They knew it. They knew the truth of what all the scripture had been saying. And so when they ask him the question, and he answers it, then what was their cry, Tyler? Uh, off with his head. He said, not that directly. What did they say specifically? It's not dead. We want to put death. Because he was guilty of the sin of? Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Now, wait a second. You asked him a question that you knew that that was the right answer to the question. But now you've accused him of blasphemy, even though everything in your knowledge of the scripture 
says that that's the answer that you've been waiting for for at least a thousand years since David and the promise to David. Um, hmm. We let the Savior do it until he turns out to not like us and beat us upside the head spiritually and religiously at every given turn. At which point, who cares? Especially because he doesn't seem like the warrior type. He just seems like the annoy us to the nth degree type. And we don't like that. So away with him. Away with him. And their accusation is that he's spoken evil of God by answering a question accurately in agreement with the word of God. Mm -hmm. You say, what's the application today? There's a lot of people today, they know what the Word of God says, but they don't like what it actually says, and so they come up with something different. And now here's the biggest one that they do that with. Nearly every church out there will say that baptism is a command of Jesus, and it's important, but it's not essential. That's like them saying that Jesus was guilty of blasphemy, for answering the question that fulfilled all of Scripture. And what is it that people substitute? Some silly prayer that Jesus never commanded and the apostles never taught because they don't want to do what God actually said in the first place. The whole time claiming that Jesus is Lord, but teaching that his command is not essential. Modern-day Sadducees and Pharisees have to watch out for it. I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And uh, Lord Wynn will see you tonight at... 7 o'clock. On... Either on a live stream or in person. For our Wednesday evening Bible class. Until then.